Hey everyone, welcome back to Immortal News. Today we're taking a look at the lives of some remarkable people who recently passed away. We also have a sad update regarding renowned singer Celine Dion. As always, at Immortal News we want to remember those who've made a difference. If their stories hit you in the feels, give the video a thumbs up. Let's share some respect and remember the amazing people we've lost. Number 9. Maria Eugenia Richween, a trailblazer and beloved actress, passed away at the age of 71 due to complications in a Palm Springs hot tub. Maria Agudelo was born in Cali, Colombia in 1952. She went on to become the first Latina Playboy bunny and later a famed actress who portrayed Buddy Holly's wife in the 1978 film The Buddy Holly Story. Her portrayal in the biopic was praised for its depth and complexity, representing a watershed moment in her acting career. Her legacy goes beyond her pioneering work at Playboy and her acting accomplishments. Her early infatuation with the performing arts, influenced by figures such as Audrey Hepburn, drove her desire to dance and act. This passion propelled her to famous appearances in television shows like AKA Pablo, Three's Company, Sledgehammer, and Freddy's Nightmares. Throughout her life, she was a symbol of grace, sophistication, and fortitude. Her journey from Colombia to the United States, as well as her success in the entertainment world, demonstrate her skill, hard work, and determination. She was not only a mentor and inspiration to many in the Latino and acting communities, but she was also a caring individual recognized for her warmth and generosity. As we commemorate Maria Richwine, we honor her accomplishments to film and television, her pioneering spirit, and the lasting impression she made on those who knew her and the audiences she captivated. Tributes to Maria Richwine. Number 8. Veteran news anchor Bill Jorgensen, known for his tenure on New York City's WNU and his signature sign-off, passed away at the age of 96. Jorgensen rose to prominence as the founding anchor of WNU's 10 o'clock news, a position he held for over a decade after joining the station in 1967. He became a familiar face in New York City homes, delivering the evening news with a steady presence. His nightly sign-off, Thanking you for your time this time until next time became a trademark of the program. Another hallmark of Jorgensen's career was the nightly reminder, it's 10 o'clock, do you know where your children are? This public service message, aimed at parental awareness, became a cultural touchstone during its run from the late 1960s to the 1980s. Jorgensen's daughter, Rebecca Jorgensen, shared a heartfelt tribute on Facebook, remembering her father's dedication to uncovering stories that mattered. She highlighted his commitment to environmental issues, citing his coverage of pollution problems in Cleveland, as well as his reporting on inspiring tales like the solo transatlantic voyage of Robert Manry. Jorgensen's career also included coverage of high-profile cases like the trial of Dr. Sam Shepard. Following his time at WNEW, Jorgensen continued his broadcasting career at WPIX-TV, anchoring both local and national segments. He later co-founded the Independent Network News, Bill Jorgensen's passing marks the end of an era for New York City news. Tributes poured in from colleagues and viewers alike, remembering him as a dedicated journalist and a comforting presence on the airwaves. Tributes to Bill Jorgensen. Number 7. David Breeshears, a legendary mountaineer, filmmaker, and advocate for climate change awareness, passed away at the age of 68. Breeshears' family confirmed his passing, stating that he died of natural causes. Details surrounding the exact cause of death are pending. A true adventurer at heart, Breeshears scaled the peak of Mount Everest an impressive five times throughout his lifetime. His mountaineering achievements were further amplified by his filmmaking skills. In 1996, he bravely ascended Everest with an IMAX camera, capturing the awe-inspiring beauty and perilous challenges of the mountain for a documentary released in 1998. Beyond documenting his own expeditions, 
Rishir's passion extended to environmental issues. He was deeply concerned about the impact of climate change on the Himalayas. In 2007, he founded Glacier Works, a nonprofit organization dedicated to raising awareness about the dramatic changes affecting the region's glaciers through artistic expression, scientific research, and adventurous exploration. Brishir's dedication to his craft wasn't limited to capturing breathtaking scenery. His commitment to human life was evident in 1996 when his team, filming on Everest, encountered a devastating blizzard. The team prioritized the safety of fellow climbers over filming, demonstrating Brishir's unwavering humanity alongside his adventurous spirit. David Brishir's remarkable career leaves a lasting legacy. He will be remembered as a skilled climber, a talented filmmaker, and a passionate advocate for environmental protection. Tributes poured in from the mountaineering community and beyond, honoring his achievements and his dedication to preserving the natural world. Tributes to David Brashears. Number 6. The Polish acting community mourns the loss of Maria Chwalibog, a celebrated actress who graced both stage and screen for over six decades. Chwalibog passed away at the age of 91. Chwalibog's impressive career boasts over 70 theatrical roles and appearances in 34 television theater productions. She captivated audiences with her final television performance in 2003, playing Stara in Lucia and Her Children. Her film debut came in 1956 with the comedy Nicodem Dizma. Throughout her film career, Chwalibog appeared in dozens of productions, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. A particular highlight was her critically acclaimed portrayal of Irina, the lead character in Agnieszka Holland's A Single Woman, which earned her the award for Best Actress at the 1988 Polish Film Festival. Chwalibog's on-screen presence resonated with audiences of all ages. She is fondly remembered for roles like the innkeeper Antosia in Mother Joanna of the Angels and Karpia Lova, wife of Wiesław Gowas's character in the popular film Wanted Wanted. Her filmography also includes titles like Rush Hour, Brunei in the Evening Time, and Korczak. Her final film appearance came in 2015's Carte Blanche. Beyond the big screen, Chwalibog's theatrical career flourished across various cities in Poland. She performed at theaters in Białystok, Bydgoszcz, Kozelin, Szczecin, and Warsaw. Audiences in Warsaw had the privilege of witnessing her talent at the National Theatre, the Studio Theatre, the Nawoli Theatre, and the Dramatic Theatre. Her last stage appearance was in The Wardrobe at the Ateneum Theatre in 1997. Maria Chwalibog's dedication to her craft extended to radio plays. Polish radio theatre listeners enjoyed her performances for many years, with her final radio role being Monica in Creative Torment in 2017. The numerous awards and distinctions Chwalibog received throughout her career are a testament to her remarkable talent. These include the Amber Ring in 1967 and the Silver Medal for Merit to Culture, Gloria Artis, in 2019. Tributes poured in from colleagues and admirers, remembering Maria Chwalibog as a captivating actress who enriched Polish theater and film for generations. Tributes to Maria Chwalibog. Number 5. Peter Kelly, a cherished icon of Scottish theatre, passed away at the age of 82, leaving behind a legacy adorned with memorable performances and a deep impact on the theatrical world. Renowned for his role in the Aladdin pantomime at Glasgow's King's Theatre in 2006, his skills shone brightly throughout Scottish and international stages. His achievements to the arts were recognised by institutions such as the National Theatre of Scotland and King's Theatre, both of which use social media to express their sadness and remember his extraordinary accomplishments to Scottish theatre. Throughout a remarkable career spanning nearly 70 years, he was praised for his diverse performances and unwavering commitment to his profession. His portrayal of a variety of characters, from pantomime dames at the Citizens Theatre to main roles in plays around the UK, 
demonstrated his tremendous range and dedication to narrative. His work struck a chord with both audiences and co-workers, making a lasting mark on those who were fortunate enough to experience his brilliance. His passing has sparked an outpouring of tributes from the theater community, colleagues, and fans, all of whom shared personal memories of a guy who was not just an exceptional actor, but also a kind and lovely person. His legacy as a great man of Scottish theater will remain, inspiring future generations of actors and demonstrating his important contributions to the performing arts. As we say goodbye to Peter Kelly, we remember him not only for his performances on stage, but also for the warmth and kindness he demonstrated off stage. Tributes to Peter Kelly. Number 4. Walter Bloom, a luminary in the world of horse racing and a revered Hall of Fame jockey, passed away in Hallandale Beach, Florida, at the age of 89. His legendary career was highlighted by his dramatic victory aboard Pass Catcher in the 1971 Belmont Stakes, which ended Cannonero II Triple Crown Dreams in a surprising upset. Bloom won an incredible 4,382 races during his career, which lasted from 1953 to 1975, cementing his position among the sport's top. His accomplishments on the track were matched by his honesty and leadership off of it. Following his retirement from jockeying, he established himself as a recognized racing official and staunch advocate for fair play and jockey welfare, making substantial contributions to the sport's governance. His passion for racing was clear in his dual roles, first dazzling fans with his racing prowess and then protecting the sport's integrity as a steward. His influence goes beyond his race triumphs and official duties. He was a mentor and role model for many in the racing world. His death has prompted an outpouring of accolades from fellow riders, trainers, racing officials, and spectators who remember him not only for his accomplishments, but also for the character and warmth he gave to the sport. His achievements in horse racing were honored when he was inducted into the National Museum of Racing Hall of Fame in 1987 and the International Jewish Sports Hall of Fame in 1991. His life's work exemplifies a deep devotion to excellence, sportsmanship, and the eternal spirit of horse racing. Tributes to Walter Bloom. Number 3. Milo Mike Lude. The University of Washington's revolutionary athletic director who launched Husky Sports into a golden period, passed away at the astonishing age of 101 in Tucson, Arizona. Serving from 1976 until 1991, he made substantial contributions, most notably to the football team, which thrived under his supervision and Don James's coaching prowess. They worked together to build the Huskies into a formidable force culminating in several Rose Bowl trips and a national championship in 1991, though Lude had left by then. His contributions went beyond the football field. He was involved in the development of the Husky Stadium North Deck, a project that encountered initial obstacles but eventually succeeded, enriching the stadium's history. His dedication to greatness had a lasting impact on UW athletics, setting high expectations for performance and community involvement. Aside from his administrative skills, his previous career as a football coach, which included a spell at Colorado State, demonstrated his great love for the game and knowledge of collegiate athletics complexities. This devotion guided his whole career from coaching to athletic administration. After leaving Montlake, he became Auburn University's athletic director, solidifying his legacy in the collegiate athletic scene. In retirement, he continued to live an active lifestyle skydiving on his 93rd birthday to demonstrate his enduring enthusiasm and zest for life. Mike Lude's impact on the University of Washington and collegiate athletics in general remains a shining example of leadership, ingenuity, and dedication. His legacy will continue to motivate future generations of athletes, coaches, and administrators. Tributes to Mike Lude. Number 2. 
Yong Soon Min, a trailblazing Korean-American artist, activist, educator, and curator known for her profound exploration of Asian-American identity, politics, and culture, passed away at her home in Los Angeles at the age of 70. Many people lamented her loss, including the Institute of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles, which emphasized her vital efforts to increase the exposure of Asian-American artists. Min was born in Bugak, Korea in 1953 and moved to the United States when she was seven years old, embarking on a journey that would leave an unforgettable impression on the art world. Her work, which was profoundly intertwined with her personal story and political action, explored the intricacies of identity and cultural diaspora. Her unique use of mixed media, such as photography, installation, and text, pushed and enlarged the frontiers of contemporary art. Her significant works, such as Make Me and Defining Moments, have been praised for their perceptive commentary on race, gender, and ethnicity, cementing her place as a key player in the discussion of multiculturalism and artistic representation. Throughout her career, she was more than just an artist. She was a renowned curator and educator who influenced subsequent generations' perceptions on art and identity. Her curatorial work, including There, Sites of Korean Diaspora, and Transpop, Korea-Vietnam Remix, were essential in bridging cultural narratives and encouraging discussion across disparate populations. As a professor emerita at UC Irvine, she shared her expertise and experience, improving the academic environment with her critical observations and caring mentoring. Yong Soon Min's legacy as a pioneer in the Asian American art movement, her unshakable commitment to social justice, and her significant influence on both the art world and her community will be treasured and remembered. Tributes to Yong Soon Min. Today's top headlines. News 1. Celine Dion, the cherished voice behind countless hits, offers a beacon of hope and resilience on International Stiff Person Syndrome Awareness Day. The celebrated artist, who publicly disclosed her diagnosis with this rare neurological condition in late 2022, took to social media to extend her heartfelt gratitude for the overwhelming support she's received and to uplift others facing similar challenges. Surrounded by the strength of her family and fans, Dion remains steadfast in her journey towards healing and eventual return to the stage. Her message, We Can Do It, echoes a powerful reminder of the human spirit's capacity to confront adversity with courage. Dion's unwavering determination not only sheds light on stiff person syndrome, but also serves as an inspiration to all navigating their battles, reinforcing the idea that love and support can move mountains. News 2. Victoria Monet has etched her name in the annals of Grammy history, becoming the first black woman to clinch the award for Best Engineered Album. This landmark achievement not only shines a spotlight on her multifaceted talent, but also heralds a seismic shift towards inclusivity and diversity within the music engineering realm. Monet, who is celebrated for her prowess as a singer-songwriter, took the music world by storm bagging three Grammys, including Best New Artist and Best R and B Album. Her historic win underscores the critical need for greater representation of women, especially Black women, in technical roles within the music industry. As Monet reflects on her journey, she advocates for a future where female engineers are no longer rarities but the norm, paving the way for the next generation of talent. Her story is a powerful testament to breaking barriers and redefining the narrative in music production and engineering. News 3. Pierce Brosnan, renowned for his roles as James Bond and in iconic films such as Mrs. Doubtfire and The Thomas Crown Affair, found himself in legal hot water after veering off the path during a visit to Yellowstone National Park. Captured by the lens of social media, Brosnan's off-trail excursion in the park's thermal areas led to a court appearance via call where he pleaded guilty. The actor was fined $500 and ordered to contribute $1,000 to Yellowstone Forever, highlighting the importance of preserving the sanctity of national parks. Brosnan expressed his regret over the incident, emphasizing his respect for the natural world and the impulsiveness of his action. This incident serves as a poignant reminder of the balance between admiring nature's beauty and adhering to its protective regulations, even for celebrities. 
News 4. In a heartfelt reflection, Shakira reveals the depth of her devotion and the sacrifices she made for love during her 11-year relationship with Gerard Piquet. Speaking to the Sunday Times, the celebrated singer shared how she willingly paused her illustrious career to support Piquet's football ambitions, underlining the lot of sacrifice made out of love. This candid admission comes in the wake of their separation in June 2022, a decision that shook fans worldwide. As Shakira prepares to launch her latest album, Las Mujeres Ya No Lloran, her story resonates as a poignant reminder of the personal challenges faced by public figures, highlighting the complex balance between professional success and personal fulfillment. News 5. In a heartwarming display of inclusivity and joy, Sandy Springs, Georgia, recently hosted its second annual Superstar Prom, where over 70 adults with disabilities were celebrated as royalty. Each attendee, ranging in age from 13 to 72, was crowned either prom king or queen, ensuring that no one felt left out of this special night. The event, organized by the city's Recreation and Parks Department, offered a magical experience with non-stop dancing, games, and even a red carpet entrance styled after the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Guests received the star treatment with complimentary hair, makeup, and grooming services provided by Paul Mitchell Asani School. This unforgettable prom not only offered a night of fun, but also a profound sense of community and belonging, highlighting the importance of acceptance and inclusivity in every aspect of society. Number one, John Lomax, the revered anchor of Good Morning Cincinnati on WKRC Local 12, passed away at the age of 72. His illustrious 39-year career at WKRC, which included 32 years of waking up Cincinnati with his co-hosting duties, established him as a popular figure in local journalism. His passing was ascribed to pneumonia-related complications. His dedication to journalism was demonstrated by his mentoring of younger reporters and steadfast support for his colleagues, who lovingly regarded him as a mentor and a second dad. His calm and level-headed demeanor earned him respect not only among his co-workers, but also throughout the Cincinnati community, which he tirelessly served. Throughout his lengthy career, Lomax not only conveyed news, but also became a vital part of the fabric of Cincinnati, earning him the distinction of having his retirement day declared John Lomax Day in Hamilton County. Beyond his professional accomplishments, his legacy as a trailblazer for African-American journalists, as well as his personal fight with diabetes, demonstrated his tenacity and dedication to making a difference, both on and off television. John Lomax's passing marks the end of an era in Cincinnati's morning news. His friendliness, professionalism, and dedication to journalism have left a lasting impression on those who knew him, as well as the many viewers who welcomed him into their homes every morning. Tributes to John Lomax.